Hello, everyone, and welcome to another great night of action here on AEW Dark. I am Excalibur, joined by the human suplex machine, Taz, and Olympic bronze medalist, Anthony Agogo. And Anthony, I understand that you've got a, a match here tonight that you're really looking forward to. QT Marshall, my mentor, my teacher, QT Marshall, is, is, I was going to say, boxing is wrestling tonight. I cannot wait to watch him up close and personal. I'd, I'd love to watch him box. I'd like, I think that'd be pretty entertaining. Taz, I'd love to see you box his ears. <laughs> but let's not delay any further and send it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. This is a six-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a total combined weight of 683 pounds, the team of Terrence and Terrell Hughes with Badu. Taz, last week here on AEW Dark, we saw TNT take on SCU, a very, very impressive performance by the Hughes brothers. Yes, they, uh, they definitely have had uh, many, uh, several, I should say, impressive outings TNT has, and Mbadu always has been impressive. Big, tough, strong man for sure, Mbadu. And their opponents, at a total combined weight of 742 pounds, the team of Nick Camarado, QT Marshall, and the natural Dustin Rhodes. Anthony, how about a couple weeks ago on Dynamite when Nick Camarado went one on one with the former AEW World Champion John Moxley? What a performance! He he answered the call at, at the last minute. The only man crazy enough to take on. John Moxley, he put in a great performance. Uh, I was really proud of the big man. It was John Moxley's first match since having the AEW World Championship title stolen by Kenny Omega. And you know, after something like that, Anthony Moxley's going to be fired up. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Moxley, anyway, he's, he's always fired up. And then when he had his, his title robbed from him, he's even more fired up. And yeah, look, he, look it's great to see John Moxley back wrestling you know, weekly in an AEW ring. But as I said, Nick Komoroto performed really well against probably, arguably, one of the very best wrestlers in the world. Yeah, say what you will about Kenny Omega and how he won the title, Taz, but he, he and Moxley neck and neck for maybe best in the world. Oh, there's no argument. I mean, I completely agree with you on that. I mean, I've had my issues along with Brian Cage has had issues, obviously, with Moxley, but nothing but respect for him. And Kenny Omega, obviously, an amazing, uh, amazing pro wrestler, superstar for years, and an excellent world champion, like him or not, right now in AEW. Now we see Nick Camarado starting things off with Terrell Hughes of TNT. And, well, as he tags out to brother Terrence. Yeah, I kind of would have got Mbadu in this thing because of the size. You know, body weight situation and power of, you know, Big Nick and uh, Mbadu would have been impressive yeah, to see. Mbadu matches up nicely with Nick Camarado. I think that's who he wants. Yeah, there it is. Mbadu, he's, he's ready for it. Don't back down. Here we go. The man born in Lagos, Nigeria, now squaring off with the man born in uh, Philadelphia, Jersey. Pennsylvania. I thought he was from Jersey. Either way, oh, look at this. What the heck? Either way, you stepped all over it. So thank you. Hey, you know, you're welcome. Oh, look at that. Camarado had his back turned and TNT taking advantage. Oh, 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 oh. counted out that backdrop did Camarado. And Badu sent to the outside. Break oh. through the double clothesline attempt and takes down TNT. The strength of Nick Camarado. How about that, Anthony? That's just power. Whoa! Oh. And that's Here's precision. Here's Marshall, my man. Look, there's not one move in wrestling that that man cannot do. You know what? I, I, kinda, wow. I, I have to agree with you on that, Anthony. No, I, you know, listen, QT Marshall, I mean, it's definitely he's a huge dictionary, dictionary of offensive moves and a beautiful head of hair forming right now also. He's kicking in. He's definitely kicking in. Well, maybe not that camera angle, but I hear you, bro. <laughs> I'd like to see QT Marshall's Phoenix Flash. I don't want to see anything that he has that's a Phoenix. Oh, nice side slam right there. Terrence up on Terrell's shoulders. Oh, they went for the Ooh. assisted Death Valley driver, but QT rolled inward. It's not often that TNT will backfire on a double team maneuver. And now the natural Dustin Rhodes tags in for his team. Knee lift to the jaw of Terrell Hughes. Dustin immediately goes for the cover. 
Yeah, and for any young wrestlers watching this, did you see the sense of urgency on that pin cover right after the knee? You know, Dustin wasted no time. He went for the cover. It didn't work, but still, that's that's how you go for a cover. He took a body shot there, but oh, beautiful arm there. He just gets better and better with age, doesn't he, Dustin? He's, he's, it's like he doesn't age. I mean, I've wrestled him many times years ago, and it's like I think he's in better shape now. Well, to your to your point, Taz, uh, Dustin Rhodes not uh, not wasting any time. I think he, he'll be the first to admit he's got uh, more runway behind him in his, his wrestling career than he does in front of him. He wants to make the most of every single second he spends in the ring. Back elbow to Terrence Hughes, but Terrell rocks the natural with the clothesline. Cover here, hook of the near leg. Dustin, uh, you know, Anthony, you've, you've been training at the Nightmare Factory in uh, Norcross, Georgia with uh, QT Marshall, but Dustin Rhodes recently opening the, the Rhodes Wrestling Academy in Austin, Texas. So a lot of uh, lot of knowledge being passed down to the next generation. Well, yeah, listen, he's wrestled for in, in five decades, the 80s, 90s, noughties, 10s, and now the 20s. He's got so much experience and wealth knowledge to share with, with the young students. I wish Dustin all the best with his school. TNT really putting the boots to Dustin Rhodes, and now Mbadu, powerful right hand. Might not want to leave Dustin alone in the ring like that in the transition of the tag, though. You know, Dustin was a little rock, so he couldn't make it over to Marshall or uh, Nick, but Nick Camarado, but still, just don't leave alone. And keep in that oh. corner. Wow, that was a lot of power, right? Look at that. And Mbadu drops QT. The referee's attention is diverted. Excalibur, if you're going to say his name, say it. It's, it's Mbadu. Mbadu. Not Mbadu, okay? Wow, well, I, I guess I've said it wrong, too, but I think that it would take up a lot of the commentary time if you use that kind of inflection that every time we say Mbadu. That's it, Taz. Thank That's you. it. Thank you. Mbadu. Got it. Perfect. Well, Terrell Hughes enters the match, and oh, Terrence oh. just a right hand across the jaw of Dustin Rhodes. Downward punch, strong elbow drop. Mm. Look of the far leg. Oh, Dustin Rhodes kicking out, but a barely there kick out. Well, he's battle tested, is Dustin. So, you know, it's tough to keep him down. Now you got a rear chin lock in here. Dreaded rear chin lock. Ooh, man, listen to those body shots from the natural. Oh. <laughs> oh. Not today, right in the middle of that. Taz really, uh, really impressed by that. No, I just had a promo in the middle of a fight. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm respecting that. Yeah, sometimes it uh, takes your opponent off their game. Dustin Rhodes needs to make the crawl. Nick Camarado up on the corner. Champing at the bit for the tag. And, whoa, 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 schoolboy, look at that. Good, good job there. And it, it was not. Oh, Dustin counters the power slam. That schoolboy was actually not so much for the pinfall, but it was to take Dustin Rhodes out of uh, out of tagging position. So great heads up move there by Terrell Hughes. Uh oh, here we go. Big Nick Camarado and Mbadu. By the way, I, I got a memo. Excalibur did say it correct, Anthony. I'm sorry, I have to correct you now, sir. It is Mbadu. Where did you just get this memo from? I got people texting me at all times. You know that. I could show Anthony the text later if you don't believe me. And then he could hit me with a left hook and knock me out. It'd be great. God willing. Taz, I love you, mate. You know it. Oh, Camarado's sandwiches. Terrence Hughes and Mbadu. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, man. See that thing? Pie face. Pie oh, face wow. <laughs> he just pie face. Uh-oh. Oh, oh what is... Oh, my God. What the hell is going on over here? <gasps> what the hell? <laughs> that was nuts. I've, I've, I've never seen strength like that. I know. Look at him. And that guy's an accountant. Oh, my God. Imagine that guy doing your numbers. He's punched himself in the face, throwing you upside down into the refrigerator in the kitchen while he's he, doing the numbers. He just gorilla pressed a man who's got to be what in bed, who's got to be 250 pounds at least. At, at least. Oh, QT oh. Marshall, diamond cutter, bulldog. bulldog. Yeah. And now, you can say it. And say what? That. Mbadu's getting press wow. slammed. Oh my God. Oh, military press Whoa. into the power slam. I'm speechless.
the winners of this match. The team of QT Marshall, Dustin Rhodes, and Nick Camarado. Yeah, that was impressive, guys. That was really impressive. Mbadu looks like he got run over by a truck, and that truck's name is Nick Camarado. Just complete power, press slam, straight down into the power slam. So impressive is Camarado. And we can see exactly what Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall, the natural nightmares, see inside of Nick Camarado. We'll check out what is next. I think this is going to be a pretty special, impactful match. Ray Phoenix against the young Casey Navarro. This should be awesome. This contest is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from Miami, Florida, weighing 145 pounds, KC Navarro. KC Navarro with some fashionable frames on, but Anthony, I like yours better. Yeah, uh, me too. Me too, KC Navarro, mate. Gotta wake up early in the day to catch out me. Taz, who you got? I got nothing. No, I mean, whose frames do you like better? I don't, I, I mean, I'm wearing frames, and they're probably better than everybody's, but uh, I actually like Ray Phoenix's match better than yours. How about that? There you go. And his opponent is a break. From Mexico City, Mexico, weighing 185 pounds, Sometimes I wish Justin Roberts would get hives all over his tongue. Like swelled up hives, like the size of like a zucchini. So then he couldn't do that gimmick. One, one more noise me. One more time. That one. Kind of like your Shakira. Yeah. Shakira, Shakira! <laughs> Ray Phoenix, Casey Navarro set to square off here tonight. The bell has rung, but tomorrow night at beach break. It will be Ray Phoenix in our main event teaming up with the Bastard Pack and the former AEW World Champion John Moxley to take on the Good Brothers and the current AEW World Champion, the man who stole the title from Moxley, Kenny Omega. That's our main event tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. Oh, I can't wait for that one, Trevor. And uh, before this match, nice. Anthony, you were, you were talking about how much uh, how much Ray Phoenix has been impressing you over the last few months yeah. now that you've actually got to see him live and in person exactly because there's one thing watching it on the oh, telly. cover here there's one thing watching it on the telly but when you get to see these people live in color I, I recommend every single person when arenas open up again to come down to an AW event because watching these guys live in color is, is it's, it's a sight to, be, to, be, to behold it really is yeah we do have uh limited seats available here in uh in jacksonville so if you are in the area you want to come see live wrestling we have safe socially distanced wrestling cdc compliant seating and pods for family groups or household groups visit aew ticks for more information on that and we hope to be getting back around the country sooner than later in ray phoenix wow that back trip taz offering the hand not sure that's the uh, uh, completely sincere there by Ray Phoenix. Yeah, Ray, Ray gets in guys' heads. He's just so damn talented. And, I, I mean, got a tip the cap to Navarro also, another talented young man. And, uh, whoa, got a little frustrated. Ooh! Crushed. Yeah. <laughs> that shot. Look at his face. I know I should be impartial, but I think Ray Phoenix is probably my, in my top three favorite wrestlers in the world. I mean, after that humdinger he had with Kenny Omega for the world title a few weeks back in that, that AEW Classic with Baron Black last week, I think yeah, he was up there, top three for me. Who's the other two? Taz and? Well, I think Taz up there, I think I've, I've said it before, I think Cody Rhodes is probably the best wrestler in the world. And then Kenny Omega, he is the world champion, so both guys have claimed for their, being the best. But look, it's all about, at the minute, Ray Phoenix, he's, he's performing really well so far. Cody turns my stomach, but that was nice by Phoenix. Ooh, Ray Phoenix almost nearly turned the head of Casey Navarro off. Trying to bait him in. Oh, Ooh. man, Phoenix got hung up on that center strand. And Navarro, oh, the boots to the side of the head. Ray Phoenix might not make it to beach break tomorrow night. Casey Navarro, extremely fast athlete. Oh, that caught right there, oh, wow. there. Ray Phoenix showing off his power. Shot to the midsection, he elevates. Navarro, stun dog, millionaire counter. Navarro makes the crawl, the cover. 
Bryce Remsburg almost got collateral damages there on the kick out. Yeah, but Bryce is uh, you know, very fleet footed, super athletic. You can see just by looking at him. Casey okay, Navarro. I mean, he is. Yes, you're right, Taz. I was just letting, right. letting your observation stand on its own. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> How quick he gets off that one foot, kick right to the face throat area. I mean, he, he caught him on the wake up. As soon as Navarro, as soon as, it, as his eyes came up from the canvas, Ray Phoenix's boot was the next thing he saw. Phoenix with the double underhooks. Navarro fighting desperately. Trying to, trying to lock those fingers, lock that hand. He's wearing them down, is Phoenix. Oh, now he's got a kind of inverted pump handle there. Whoa. Steps through. Has the arm captured. Phoenix now with the. Oh, oh man. Oh, my God. Oh, he's got to tap out here. Yeah. Did he tap? I think he tapped. I thought he tapped. If not, he was on the verge of tapping. I mean, that, you, this just, and you have to tap, basically. This, this is some some violence and intensity that we're not used to seeing out of Ray Phoenix. Let's take a look at it. I think he might have tapped, but maybe it was just... I th yeah, I think it was just involuntary hand movements from being brought up and down off the canvas. Either way, Navarro still in this fight, laying in elbow strikes, but Phoenix, a couple swings, oh. Got gut wrenched here, watch out, oh boy. Oh, great reversal there by Navarro. He's a tough kid. He's very good, yeah, he did, oh wow. Certainly is, and a running slice spread there, one, two, no! Excellent cover, excellent cradle, nothing to get, that. No, no win I should say gotten. What a gigantic that upset that would have been ahead of breach break, Anthony. Would have been a massive upset, and I, I haven't seen much of Casey Navarro before tonight, but I'm really impressed with the young man, really impressed. Tough, tough kid indeed. Ray Phoenix being positioned by Navarro. Oh, maybe playing possum a little bit. Oh, oh, you can see immediately the redness rising on the chest of Casey Navarro from those brutal chops. Oh, 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 oh. we'll see tomorrow night, beast break as you were saying. Can you make it good brothers? Oh, wait, 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 hold on, wait, what's Phoenix got in mind here? How quick he goes to the top. Watch out, keep your balance there, Ray. Oh! Big time frog splash. The frog splash right on the money, and that ends the night of KC Navarro. The winner of this match, Ray Phoenix. He can beat you so many different ways. That's what's another reason why it's so tough to prepare for Phoenix. Tomorrow night's gonna be special. Yeah, tomorrow night it will be Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers, the Impact Tag Team Wrestling Champions, taking on Ray Phoenix, the Bastard Pack, and John Moxley in our main event tomorrow night, 8 7 Central on TNT. It will be spectacular for sure. And Phoenix. Anthony, always impressive, looked in tip-top form tonight. There, there aren't enough superlatives in the English dictionary to, to describe this man. He is so goddamn good. And he makes things look easy. Like that frog splash, that's such a hard move to do. He, he's just, he's brilliant. Tesha Price goes one-on-one -on -one with the Brazilian judo prodigy Ty Conti, who will have 99 Anna J of the Dark Order in her corner next. This next match is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Chelsea, Michigan, Tasha Price. Taz, understand you're over in Chelsea. Oh, I'm over in Chelsea, Detroit, Lansing, uh, the place where they make the vacuum cleaners. Grand Ra where? Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids. Muskegon. They love me in Muskegon. Oh, Marquette. Over. Marquette up in the UP. Marquette? Yeah. By the university? No, no, it's. Oh, uh, that's in Milwaukee. And her opponent, from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Ty Conti. Ty Conti has looked so impressive as of late.
join the Dark Order. Negative one is really, I mean, Taz, I hate to say it. Yes. The most fearsome faction leader in all of AEW. I agree. I agree. I, I, he's definitely a lot meaner than me. I can tell you that oh, right see, now. He did the little hard handshake, too. <laughs> Now, this, is a, this is an impressive show of force here. Trying to take Tesha Price off of her game. Price looks focused, though, and that's what you have to do. I mean, stay locked in, stay focused, no matter what kind of Tom Fuller is going on around before the match. And you notice how Ty Conte, once that bell rang, she switched into another gear with her eyes right away. Anthony, going back to our earlier conversation, as you train in professional wrestling, how much time do you find yourself spending, like what, what percentage of time do you find yourself spending on keeping your boxing skills sharp? Oh, fantastic move. I was a boxer for 18 years. So listen, it's like riding a bicycle. You, you never forget it. I haven't got to train in boxing much anymore because I don't forget it. It's, it's within me, it's instilled in me. Mm -hmm. So all the time I do, I train in wrestling. And I'm sure uh, Ty Conti is the same, but- A cover here. Great counter there by Tesha Price. Now for a judoka, it is the same thing. You don't, you don't, I mean, at the, once you hit a level, a high brown or you know, a brown belt, I should say, or, or any kind of level Dan of a black belt, yeah, I'm not saying you should stop training, but to your point, Anthony, no, you kind of, it's like riding a bike, like you said. Well, I think one of the great transitions is the fact that when you're an elite athlete in one sport, you have that dedication, the determination, the work ethic that it requires to get to the top of one sport, you can just repackage that and use it in professional wrestling, and that's what I'm doing, and that's what Ty Conti's done. Ty Conti, very early in her professional wrestling career, She's got a very bright future ahead of her as she avoids those strikes from Tesha Price. And now and that knee bar, very nice how she did that, right? Yeah, brought her, brought her over the bottom rope. And so adding even more pressure onto it. Yeah, I was very impressed with that creativity of being smart and having that mat, that ring awareness. Ooh, went for the pump kick. Gets brought into the ring, hitting predicament here. Good job by Tesha when, when she did that, that schoolgirl. Whoa! Ooh. His forearm. And did you see how Ty Conti turned her back and walked off? I think that was some frustration there. Getting caught sleeping by, by Tesha Price. Yeah, right now, I'm sorry, Ty is rocked. Go ahead, Anthony. No, I was going to say frustration and a bit of inexperience, I think, as well. Um, going back to the earlier point I was making a moment ago is... Oh! Whether it's judo, boxing, wrestling, it's a fight. It's a fight situation, so that all helps as well, you know. It's a slightly different art form, but it's still a fight. End of the day, two young men, two young women duking it out to see who's the best. Right now, we're at a bit of a stalemate. Both women down, struggling to get up to their feet. We see Anna Jay in negative one in Ty Conti's corner. Ooh, wow. Blocking the, the strike with her boot was Ty Conti. Building up a lot of quick speed, first step explosion. Ty Conti is on those short clothesline. There's that drop side Nagi, which she does so well. Here comes a third right now. There it is. And Taz, she did such a great job capturing the hand of Tesha Price and then rip quartering her out and pulling her back in to that judo throw. Oh! oh, oh, oh. That strike was nasty. Well, yeah, that side Nagi, that drop side Nagi is usually done with a gi. So she's being creative because there's no gi to hold, to wrap or hook. Or yeah, ma maintaining control of her right. opponent's wrist. Oh, 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 oh! Nice. Blistering elbow strike right on the nose. For us layman's Taz, what's, what's a gi? Gi's a uniform, it's a jacket. You know, it's a jacket and with pants, you know, so it's a uniform, jacket and pants. And it's a weapon, you use it as an advantage. You can use it to choke someone out or get a, an arm bar or some, any kind of submission on someone using your gi or theirs to your advantage. Gotcha, thanks. You got it. You're done. Oh, Ty. Uh oh hey -oh. Oh. oh man. And did you hear, she, she called her shot before, and she said, you're done, and that proved to be 100% correct. Now, winner of this match, Ty Conte. Enter 99. 99, negative and one. Negative one, yes. And Ty Conte, I think important to point out, not officially part of Dark Order, but still, Anna Jay's best friend, and somebody that negative one is uh, taking quite a bit of a liking to. Well, I mean, there's a lot to like in Ty Conte. Her abilities in the ring are something special. Uh, as, as in Anna Jay, I mean, and they're, as well documented, they're, you know, best friends. There you go. Ah, there it is. Ah. <laughs> Ty Conte victorious here tonight on AEW Dark.
guys, here we go. I can't wait to see it. Whoa. Que Dios bendiga la botella. Oh my gosh, Chris, you've completely outdone yourself. But dead ass, yo, how is this even possible? I mean, look at the craftsmanship. It's so beautiful. Look how it turned out. It's absolutely exquisite. Drink what the demo god drinks. A little bit of the bubbly is back, baby. Supplies are limited. Go to littlebitofthebubbly.com and order now. Get it before it's gone, because last year sold out. Viva and vino brioso! Yay! Ay, ay, ay! I cannot wait. Right now, the waiting room with Britt Baker and her guest is none other than my man, Ricky Starks. Everyone smile. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to another episode of The Waiting Room. And without further ado, the doctor will see you now. Here's your host, my dentist, and yours, the role model and the face of AEW Women's Division, the incomparable Dr. Britt Baker. <laughs> God, we love her. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to The Waiting Room. First things first, let's talk about Kenny Omega, the latest and greatest fashion icon. Have you seen what he's wearing lately? Now, what he did to Pentagon with the shoe, I don't know about that. I personally would never use a shoe as a weapon, but when Kenny did it, it was kind of sexy. So if you ever want to come on The Waiting Room, Omega, you're a shoe-in. <laughs> Tomorrow night on Beach Break, we have the Tag Team Battle Royal, where the winners will get to face the Young Bucks at Revolution for the Tag Team Championship titles. However, the Young Bucks are in the Battle Royal. <laughs> and we all know they'd love to wrestle themselves because they love putting themselves over. Ain't that right, Reva? <laughs> right, 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 right. Speaking right. of getting over, you're welcome, boys, for getting the book over on the waiting room. That's right. Last thing before we bring out our guest, the wedding, it's coming, we're so excited. I love weddings, you love weddings, we all love weddings. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous bridal party. And if there is one ugly photo, we can all confidently say, the butler did it. Reba. <laughs> and I am personally loving this budding friendship between Miro and Charles Taylor, because sometimes you just gotta switch up your best friends, which, let me bring out our next guest, one of my personal favorites, member of Team Taz, Ricky Starks. The revolution is televised. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all, doctor. Wow, look at you. You look good. No, you look good. No, you look good. No, you look good. You, you look, look good. good. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're so happy to have you here. And because I'm like really curious, what do you have going on? Well, I don't know if you heard the big news, everybody, but it's gonna be me and Brian Cage against Darby Allen and Sting at Revolution and none other than a street fight. And hey, ladies, listen, don't let the threads fool you. I get down and dirty, okay? You know, I'm really excited for that. And before you got here at AW, there was always something missing. It's like star power. It wasn't quite there. Now that you're here, you're a shining star, that's for sure. Oh, man. Oh, stop it. You know, it's funny. Actually, when I came here, I realized that the future is way clearer now because I'm staring at you. I'm gushing. No. Yeah. <laughs> But also, I, I just want to point out, I'm loving your outfit. I love it. I love all of it. You look great. Okay. A woman that can do it all. Oh. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Wow. I like it. Listen, I want to let you know something. There's something that you, you remind me of. And what? 
ask, well, you like the Meghan Markle of AEW. You know that? Aww. That's so ironic because I was just about to tell you that I'm getting Prince vibes. Really? What, yeah. what, what type of like, prince? Well, oh. do we, you want me to go oh. on and Stop talk it for crying out loud. Oh. Put this on. Thank you. I love your necklace. I don't. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Tony. How you doing? I'm doing great. Notice the pictures on the wall? Yeah, that's hey, so, you. Hey, uh, so anyway, I've been told that we are out of time. So thank you for being with us here on the... What? Hey, what? No, Tony, what? we have... We have time. No, Keith Mitchell just said to wrap it up. Fans, we're out of time. We'll see you next time on The Waiting Room. Ahead of her big matchup tomorrow night at Beach Break with Dr. Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa will be in action next against the real mean girl, Danny Jordan. This next contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Long Island, New York, Danny Jordan. Taz. Yes. I used to think that Danny Jordan was the meanest person in AEW. Not anymore. Yeah, and please don't tell him I said this, but I think it's negative one. I, I actually think negative one is a very nice young man. Uh, because yeah, he's a fan of Team Taz. And, and I'm a fan of the Dark Order and him. But yes, uh, I, you know, I can understand what you're saying, but Danny Jordan, very mean. A mean girl city right here. You think uh, you could ever see a point where you and Negative One sit down at the bargaining table and maybe uh, work up some sort of crossover between Team Taz and uh, and Dark Order? Sit down, maybe have a glass of milk and a shot of Jack Daniels. I like the milk, and he yeah. probably likes the Jack. Yeah, we can do that. That's why they're trying to recruit Hangman. <laughs> yeah. And her opponent from the graveyards of Tijuana, Mexico. Thunder Rosa! Tomorrow night on the very special edition of AEW Dynamite, it will be Beach Break, and it will be that woman, Thunder Rosa, going one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, for the first time ever. Yeah, it's going to be a, definitely a hard-hitting affair between those two ladies. A lot of... Uh, a lot of bad blood between Britt and Rosa. Thunder Rosa, not a, not that easily thrown off of her game. Well, she went for a go behind and it wasn't there, but that one was. It was spin drill action. And into the front chancery. Danny Jordan trying to Escape out with Thunder Rosa. Well, Danny Jordan does escape out into the hammerlock. Yes, and switches real quick to a side headlock, so. It's the reversal right there. Very interesting. Danny Jordan, control of Thunder Rosa's wrist. Irish whip into the ropes, reversed. Rosa goes for the trip. Danny Jordan avoids it. Leapfrog over the top by Thunder Rosa. Arm drag, snap. Action there. Very quick. I, you know, you're right. Snap. There's another one. Second arm drag. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Kick to the midsection. Stop Danny Jordan in her tracks. And the body slam there by Thunder Rosa. Sit out. Senton driving the wind out of Danny Jordan's lungs and nearly picking up a victory there. Yeah, a lot of toughness by Jordan to kick out. But you're right. That was a hard as heck, and she was able to kick out of it. <clears throat> Running elbow strike in the corner. Okay. I don't think she's done. Thunder Rosa clears the distance. Nobody home, though. Danny Jordan able to roll out. Lifting uppercut there. Jordan rolls her through. Drop kick to the face. Cover here. Two, oh, just a one, actually. Nice stuff by Danny Jordan. Got us try to keep on. Rosa, you got to keep following up. Uh oh, there we go. Team Jordan with that burn book in hand. Maybe gonna gonna read a passage. This is a mistake here. Don't get distracted with the book. 
mean, you're in there one of the best women competitors in the world. Yeah, former NWA Women's World Champion Thunder Rosa. Gotta be smarter than that. Swing and up. Oh, oh, oh man, drop kick. Thunder Rosa's right boot caught Danny Jordan underneath the jaw. She exploded her body away from Jordan's with the kick, using her body as the cushion. It was nasty. Right elbow strike missed its mark, but that one didn't from Danny Jordan. And the right hand for good measure. Irish whip into the. Oh! I thought she went drop toe. I don't think she got all that, but she was enough to trip her up, though. Yeah, I think I think Danny Jordan's head hit the top turnbuckle and the center as well. Thunder Rosa hits that running clothesline. Check this out. Comes off driving both knees into the chest of her opponent. Thunder Rosa charging into the corner. Pinpoint accuracy with the drop kick, Taz. That was excellently done right there by Rosa. The end might be near here for Danny Jordan. Rosa peppering Danny Jordan with elbow strikes. Oh, no, re reversal there from Danny Jordan. Thunder Rosa might have been playing possum, though. Oh, wow, what a kick. Danny Jordan. Uh oh. Off the bottom rope using the, the middle as a fulcrum cover here. Two, no. Imagine that. Right before she's going to face Britt Baker, imagine that. Yeah, that probably would have been very unnerving for Thunder Rosa had that been the end. Yeah. Thunder Rosa, oh, just plants Danny Jordan. One, two, three. No winner of this match, Thunder Rosa. Taz, just like that, Thunder Rosa was able to turn the tables on her opponent and pick up a victory. Yeah, that's how quick someone like Thunder Rosa can turn the table on you and capture a win on you. That's something Dr. Britt Baker's got to be very careful of when you face the ever tough Rosa. Tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. It will be beach break, and it will be the long-awaited meeting between Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and that woman, Thunder Rosa. Tag team action coming up next. Two of my guys that I love a lot, even though they're not Team Taz, they're in the inner circle, Santana and Ortiz. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making their way to the ring at a combined weight of 330 pounds, the team of Fuego, Del Sol, and Barre Morales. Very interesting team here, Taz. Vare Morales and Fuego Del Sol, two very explosive, very quick competitors. But they are going to have. A tough matchup here tonight. Well, Morales is from Mexico, and Del Sol, while well, he's from Mobile, Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. And their opponents from New York, New York, at a combined weight of 425 pounds, Santana and Ortiz. If I wasn't proud, then I wouldn't be powerful. Taz, last Wednesday, when the tag team rankings came out, Santana and Ortiz lost their number five spot to none other than Chris Jericho and MJF. Yeah, could you imagine internally what's going on with the inner circle? I know from a little birdie telling me both Santana and Ortiz are extremely pissed off that they are no longer in the top five of the tag team rankings here in AEW. So you can just see the, the energy, that angry energy that they bring to the ring. I, I love it. I'm, I'm a fan of these guys. Santana and Ortiz, of course, the longest tenured tag team within the inner circle. And neither man, Santana and Ortiz, were pinned to lose that, that three-way matchup. It was MJF with a handful of trunks on Sammy Guevara. 
And that buzzer beater victory. That, you know, they had that, that gentleman's agreement of which team would be the ones to go after the AEW World Tag Team Championship is right now. Fuego del Sol. Coming out of the gates hot, Taz. Sure is. He's no pun intended. A couple good counters there. Knocked the hoodie off the hood. Off of <laughs> Ortiz. Oh! Ortiz escapes between the top and middle rope. Capture rolls Fuego around. Back Not that. Backbreaker. Brings him up in the gory special and flattens him out. Excellent job by Ortiz. Cover here. One, two. Fuego able to kick out, but Ortiz keeping the pressure on. Tags in Santana. And what do they got here? Assisted slice red. Nope. Oh, man. God. Power bomb. Neckbreaker combination and Vire Morales. If I'm Vire Morales, I'm good on the apron. Cover here. One, two. Nope. Morales not good on the apron, Taz. Yeah, so I, don't know. I think you might want to stay on the apron. <laughs> Instead, he's mixing it up with Santana, center of the ring. I respect that. Thrust kick to the jaw, Morales. Oh, high boot Ooh, there from Santana. Man. That was some shot. Santana, some kind of mean right there. Fuego to Soul, still the legal man. Rolls Santana up with the Cazadora. Fuego goes up and over. Rolls over the top, pinning combination. No, oh, boot to the midsection. Fuego. Think it's uh, Tornado DDT. No. Oh, oh, oh. God, what a drop step into a nasty mat return. And a kick to the face. Yeah, you're not going to see that kind of stuff in the NCAA Finals, I promise you. Not that type of mat return. <laughs> <laughs> That's a DQ, buddy. <laughs> Go win. Rinse it out. One. Irish whip into the ropes, reversed. Oh, Santana. Three. Boots in the face of Vary Morales. Back elbow to Fuego del Sol. Picks Fuego up in the fireman's carry. The neck breaker from Ortiz. Catalina Perez goes one on one with legit Layla Hirsch action in the women's division coming up next here on Dark. This contest is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Long Island, New York, Catalina Perez. Taz, you and Catalina go to the same tailor? No. Okay. Asked and answered. And her opponent, originally from Moscow, Russia, legit Layla Hirsch. Taz, the last time we saw Layla Hirsch in action here in AEW, it was on Dynamite a few weeks back where she faced Penelope Ford and had, a, 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 I would say, a very good shot at picking up, you know, perhaps the most important victory of her AEW career over Penelope Ford, but it was Kip Sabian who held Layla's boots down and, oh, whoa, oh, she's trying to win this one early, but Kip Sabian intervened. He cheated, helped Penelope Ford secure right. the victory, and Layla has been pissed off. Yeah, don't blame her. You know, she got tough, uh, dealt a tough deal, right? You know, you, you, you know, got cheated to lose a match. You know, on a big stage like Dynamite, you know, it's tough. Great Matt return there. And a second one. And you, you see Layla, I mean, she is, uh, 
being very aggressive here tonight, taking out her frustrations on Catalina Perez. Grabs the waist lock. Does Layla, and well, she went for the counter roll, I believe, did Layla, but it wasn't there. Ooh, just got caught. And you know, speaking of, uh, oh, look, Catalina Perez here covered. Speaking of Penelope Ford and Kip Sabian, their wedding will be tomorrow night on Dynamite. It's extra special beach break edition. The best man, Miro, will be on hand, as will his butler, Charles Taylor. Can't wait to see it. I love weddings. All of that and so much more tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. Taz, what would you get off the registry? Nothing. Okay, cool. Roll through here. Catalina. Oh, oh. Rush just ate the knee of Layla Hirsch. Wow. We are seeing some serious aggression out of Layla Hirsch. Yeah, she's definitely amped up the intensity here. Oh, Catalina escapes over the shoulders. Layla drops down. And now look at this for the cross arm breaker. And Catalina Perez tapped out immediately. The winner of this match, legit Layla Hirsch. Sometimes you have to, you know, you have to tap out quick. If you get caught like, you know, she just did by Layla in that all bar, and you got to tap out quick sometimes because you live to fight another day. Last thing you want is your bicep torn or your shoulder. That was a tight, you see right here. And she did. Tight arm bar. Yeah, that just, I think, look, and, and she, as, as Layla wrenched back, Catalina Perez knew she was in immediate danger, forced to tap out, and legit Layla Hirsch picks up an important bounce back victory here. Throw them out, throw them out. Throw them out, throw them out. Hey, it's the acclaimed. Blech, blech. Top flight, you should go through puberty, botching all your moves, so what could you do to me? Luchasaurus wanna see, got two degrees, if you so smart, you could write your own eulogy. Private party, go back to the Access Channel, matter of fact, you jokes go to Comedy Central. Dark Order's coming out for the showdown, I'ma have your weird cult looking like Jonestown. The inner circle, they fighting themselves. MJF acts mean, he's actually swell. Hey, I fight Jericho, drop him on his head, or I just let him do a lion salt throw instead. Him out, throw him out, throw <laughs> him out, throw him out. Acclaimed is the gang, yeah, what you know about? Throw him out, throw him out, throw him out, throw him out. If they in the ring, yo, we gonna throw them out. Young bucks in charge because they VPs. Politic they weigh in because they greedy. And we had them beat, but they KO'd the ref. Didn't think they cheat, but they know the rep. Make them tap four times on their head, chest, shoulders. We could put them down one finger like the holder. I don't like the bucks because the bucks are shorter. You take more TV time than Dark Order. Boring. It's the same old stuff. About to change the name to a claim gold rush. FTR act mean, but they ain't so tough. The bad attitude compensates for what? Throw them out, throw them out, throw them out, throw them out. Acclaimed is the gang, yeah, what you know about? Throw them out, throw them out, throw them out, throw them out. If they in the ring, yo, we gonna throw them out. Yo, we getting that tag title shot at Revolution. Yo, the Young Bucks, y'all are finished. All these teams is getting clapped. Check this out, two guys that talk a lot of smack and they back it up. The Acclaim is coming up next. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 387 pounds, the team of Ryzen and Danny Limelight. Taz, I believe the last time we saw Ryzen in tag team action here on Dark, he didn't even tag in. So no. if I'm Limelight, I make Ryzen start here tonight. I think that's a very good point. That's a good strategy. What if they'll do that? We shall see. And their opponents at a combined weight of 556 pounds, Anthony Bowens, Max Caster, the acclaimed. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got to fight Ryzen. He got no acclaim. I don't like the leather, but I don't kink shame. Yo. 
You about to get stamped on. Your red hair got you looking like a tampon. Yo, Danny Lime. Oh, wait, wait, Danny, is that a spider? There's a spider on Danny. Aubrey, kill the spider. Kill the spider on Danny. Oh, wait, hold on. It's just a really stupid tattoo. Yo, you dealing with the claim. Danny Limelight, let's break down the name. Lime, cause you bitter and you always upset. Light, cause you ain't got muscle on your chest. Yo, a claim don't stop. Everything we do is so hot. Hey, yo, I'm never gonna drop. And when I'm on the mic, I make Taz pop. Yo. Ah. <laughs> he does. They, they do, yeah. Aha. You got it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh. The acclaimed have arrived. I've arrived. I like the acclaimed, bro. Yeah, you know, respect. You know what I mean? It's got to be still here. Hello. Take one. Take two. Anyways. Sorry, Taz. I had to pick up my socks because they were knocked off by that rap from Max Caster where he, excellent. he rhymed stop with hot. It doesn't matter. He makes it sound right. Oh, no. It's only did not, but <laughs> I digress. <laughs> you claimed with the upper hand on Rising and Limelight here. Oh, oh Limelight. I kicked to the setup, face. Right? You don't see that one. Ryzen sent Anthony Bowens into the drop kick there. And over the top goes Danny Whoa. Limelight. Big time dive. Big time dive and the acclaimed in trouble here. Limelight returning, Max Caster to the ring. Oh, Bowens tried to stop Limelight there. He got caught. Oh, oh, oh great Caster. Drop. Excellent wow. drop kick. And the acclaimed since uh, since losing that AEW World Tag Team title match against the Young Bucks a few weeks ago, they, oh, great leg layer there by Ryzen. They dropped in the rankings, but have picked up a series of victories here and climbed all the way back up to number three, which great resilience for such a young tag team, Taz. No, it is, and they're competitive. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting guys' heads when they're, you know, tagging up against them with, with the wraps by Caster. They just really get wow. in their heads. Oh, man, the power. Tremendous power from Max Caster. And big, big clothesline takes Ryzen off his feet. Tag out Anthony Bowens, the five-tool player. One and at a time, boys, come on. Flame sending Ryzen into the ropes. Double sweep. Double drop from Caster. Bowens with a drop kick. I think Caster realized he had a shirt on. Bowens covered. <laughs> He got into it so quick, I don't think he, had, he realized he had his, a T-shirt on. You can get that brand new acclaimed T-shirt over at shopaew.com. Nice forearm shots by Bowens, a strong athlete. Nice plug, but oh, you don't plug Team Taz, FTW. Oh, I got bills, you know what I mean? Oh. Oh. Anyway, Destiny's Child. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Put to <the> section. <laughs> oh man, yeah, call for him. Ooh, what a back elbow. Elbow, and and you see how how Caster left his feet. He went down to the canvas, add even more force to it. Very interesting. Uh, not a cover, because uh, the man's on his belly. No. Caster does some strange stuff at times. I don't know, Taz. I've seen a man uh, on his belly try to be pinned before. Well, usually maybe, maybe more of a traditional way. Oh, I see. it's a little bit different. We've, uh, as Anthony Agogo would say, touched. Shoulders, uh, elbows to the midsection of Max Caster, courtesy of Ryzen. Ryzen brought up high and brought down low by Platinum and Max yeah, Caster. Good power right there. Look at him. Messing with limelight. Referee's got to stop limelight. Look at Ryzen fighting out of here. Bowles went for something, didn't work. Oh, Ryzen, back body drop. Great an opportunity for himself to make the tag out to limelight. Making the crawl is Ryzen, and he did make the tag. Danny Limelight comes in. Wow, pump kick drops Bowens off the apron. A little bit of a misdirect into the step up, Tierras. And Danny Limelight charging into the corner, uppercut. Gom and Geary. And 
Max Caster in trouble here, Taz. Yeah, he's definitely in trouble. Limelight's not stopping. Oh! He's not stopping. It's like a meteora from Limelight as he covers. Good kick out by Caster. Limelight's a little shocked he was able to kick out. And Taz, despite the fact that the acclaimed are a fairly young team here in AEW, this would have to be an upset if Limelight and Ryzen picked up the victory. Totally agree. Oh, Ryzen, Ryzen I think, just tagged himself, himself in. Yeah, he did. And that momentary distraction cost Limelight. I don't think Caster realizes Ryzen's legal. Oh, oh man. Big thrust kick from Ryzen. <laughs> Anthony Bowens getting brought back in the hard way here. Kind of snapped on the outside. It was odd. Oh! Nothing odd about that. Ripcord chop and the clothesline. Short arm clothesline there from Platinum Max Caster. Anthony Bowens now in control of Ryzen. Caster goes up. And Taz, it's a claim to fame. Bowens covers two, three. The winners of this match, the Acclaimed. Impressive. The Acclaimed is impressive. Every time I see them, they really are. There's the hand wiping brush thing with the hand on the face. Taz, I'll, I'll give it to you. The, the victory, the aggression from the Acclaimed, much more impressive than the rap. <laughs> Danny Limelight. Like, dude, leave the guy's hand alone. <laughs> what the hell is going on over here? The acclaim to fame ended the night. For Ryzen and Limelight. It's the number three tag team here in AEW continues their rise. A gigantic eight-person tag team matchup coming up next as Bear Country team up with the Concrete Rose, Sonny Kiss, and Joey Janela. They will be in action next here on AEW Dark. This is an eight-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring, the team of Sean Dean, Baron Black, Aaron Solo, and Mike Verna. Taz. A uh, impressive collection of individuals, but remains to be seen how these four men will work as a team. Yeah, it's tough. When you're, it's an eight-man situation, no matter what side it is. That's, to your point, a lot of bodies it, and cohesiveness is usually an issue. So we'll see. At least Vernon lost that cape he had on last week. He must have heard me. Fan of these two guys. And their opponents first from Bear Mountain, New York, at a combined weight of 604 pounds. Bear Boger, Bear Bronson, Bear Country. As I mentioned, the other the, the opponents of Bear Country, four very unique individuals. They will also be facing four very unique individuals here tonight. Bear Bronson on your right, Boulder on your left. Boulder Bronson. Why I just said that, but okay. Just it. Joining them at a combined weight of 391 pounds, the Concrete Rose, Sunny Kiss, the Bad Boy, Joey Janella. Taz. Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss are already like uh, oil and water. But adding Bear Country to the mix, it's like oil, water, and hydrochloric acid. Yeah, or oil, water, and tar, or oil, water, and mayonnaise, or oil, water, and ketchup. Oh, that would actually be pretty decent. Oil, water, and... Uh, well, oil, water, and tar, and oil, water, and mayonnaise are also... Those are three or two of oil-based things. How do you know? Uh, because to make mayonnaise, it's make, oil. You mix eggs with, uh, with oil. olive oil. Yeah, it depends. The yeah. It could be a peanut oil. And uh, tar is. Uh, that's no, no, I meant tar. Like, how about? Uh, <laughs> 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 
overstayed the joke. <laughs> Ooh, Aaron Solo, nice knee right there on Janela. Janela's got to try and get out of that Ooh, arm ring, and obviously did get out of it. Janela escapes out, brings down Solo, went for the high kick, makes the tag out to Sonny Kiss, trip in the corner. Solo goes face first in that middle buckle and gets a snap German suplex and a diving crossbody one. Far away was Solo and Sonny Kiss still hit that crossbody. Yeah, no, Sonny hit that crossbody, but did you notice how Solo, I mean, he almost get, he banged the back of his head on the mat, getting a little bit of whiplash because of the, yeah. the high speed that Sonny came in at. Mike Verna. Man of Steel showing off his power here. Snap, snap, power slam. Sonny kicking out at one. Verna grabbing the head of Sonny Kiss. Bring him over to the corner for Baron Black. A right hand to the ribcage there. Yeah, well, it was, well uh, the ribcage was open. Baron took advantage of it. Abdominal stretch now, really working on the midsection of Sonny. Grabbing. The leg of Sonny, trying to trying to wishbone him. Well, we know that Sonny is flexible, and Aaron Black's trying to test that flexibility. And there we see the flexibility on display. Sonny drops to a split high, a roundhouse kick avoided by Baron. Oh, atomic drop followed up by the backstabber, Baron Black. The cover here, Juan. Sonny kicking out at one. Taz, how about Baron Black last week saying a toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ray Phoenix here on Dark? That was a hell of a matchup. I mean, hell of a match. We both oh! praised both men. And the captain is really bringing it now. The uh, captain, Sean Dean, fired up, rocking Sonny Kiss with a series of drop kicks. And a sit-out spine buster. One, two, no. Sonny, man, firing that shoulder up off the canvas. Yeah, emphatic kick out. I like that. Aaron Solo. Now tagging back in. We're seeing a lot more cohesion out of Solo's team than we are Sonny's team. Oh! Ho, ho. Big stop and the cover there from Aaron Solo only gets a two count. Sonny realizes got to get a member of Bear Country in this thing or Joey Janela. Aaron Solo charging in. Sonny, the kick to the top of the head of Solo. Oh, oh God. Pulls. Sonny out of the corner. Went for the kick to the back of the head. Sonny rolls up solo. Oh, man. Corkscrew roundhouse kick. Absolutely rocked Aaron Solo. Yeah, that was awesome right there by Sonny. Sonny's got to try to get to that corner. Sonny needs to make the tag. The bad boy, Joey Janela, comes in. Mike Verna goes face first in that middle buckle again. We've yet to see Bear Country in a match. Janela, powerful right hand, drops Aaron Solo. Hey, Sonny, what's he up to here? You never know what's Sonny. Janela, yeah, standing on the back of Verna. Swinging DDT. It's actually very cool. Drops Mike Verna with a thrust kick. And Janela baiting in Baron Black and Sean Dean. All four men of the opposition on the outside. Joey Janela. Going off the shoulders of Bear Boulder. Joey Janela is fired up, Taz. Sure is. Took out all, um, all four men. Janela. I mean, I guess he just doesn't want to tag in Bear Country. They should have tagged themselves in, to be honest. Sure doesn't seem like it now. Bodies in here because Bad Country, I guess, uh, they're tagged in. I'm strong. Oh, Death Valley driver there from Joey Janela. One, just a one count is Sean Dean and Aaron Solo make it into the ring to break it up, but Bear Country doing their best to clear the ring. Bronson sends Solo to the outside. Boulder, nope, Bronson tagged in. I need a roadmap to follow along what the hell's going on here. Gotta be honest. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bear Country. Do we have roadmaps anymore? Oh, let's see. Up on the shoulders, Bronson on Boulder's shoulders and the assisted splash. Joey Janella. Oh, far away. Oh, the elbow drop from the bad boy. No winners of this match.
the team of Bear Country, Sunny Kiss, and Joey Janella. That was a, I mean, Janella made up a lot of ground in the air in that elbow. An impressive quartet, an impressive victory for these four. Joey Janela might have kicked himself in the face with Mike Verna's boot on the pinfall. I saw that. I thought okay. I, I, yeah, I, it's, yeah. Well, that would have been funny if he knocked himself out. But here we go. Watch Janela there, really flying through the air with that elbow. Really well done. Oh, oh watch that. <laughs> All right, there's your winner. We didn't even really get to touch on you and Sean Spears. How's your back? It's a little bit sore. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk about wrestling with the week. Whatever we have interest in, we're going to chop it up. Did you get the PS5? Ugh. I'm over here all weekend playing PS4 like a heathen. <laughs> Scorpio Sky and myself, James Willems, we got distracted. We're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking about pop culture. Have you seen the New York Subway Rat Man? What? <laughs> we're going to be recapping AEW. It's the most exciting part of the show. We're basically going to be talking about the week. We got a lot to get into, man. It's also what the people want to see. <laughs> oh my God. Voila. This is progress. Scorpio Sky, James Willems, Wrestling with the Week. Wrestling with the Week. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe now. Woo. It's beautiful. I love it. Women's tag team action is next. Ivelisse and Diamante in action. a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring, the team of Vert Vixen and Jasmine Allure. Vert Vixen in the uh, black, yellow, and red. Jasmine Allure in the black and pink. Teaming up here tonight against the winners of last year's AEW Women's Tag Team Cup Tournament. It's not the only tournament Talk a little bit more about that after the introductions. And their opponents, the team of La Sicaria, Ivelisse, and Diamante. Ivelisse and Diamante are on an absolute tear here in AEW, having won six of their last seven tag team matches. And you see Ivelisse and Diamante holding those medals high. That's from the AEW Women's Tag Team Cup Tournament last summer, Ivelisse and Diamante were your winners. Speaking of tournaments, the AEW Women's World Title Eliminator Tournament going to be kicking off over the next few weeks here. Brackets in the United States and Japan. The winners of each respective side will meet to decide the next contender. Going to be a definitely an exciting tournament next, Cal. And you have to imagine both Ivelisse and Diamante have their designs to be a part of that tournament well I, I i would see why why not i mean with their success as as a tag team you know that they're, they're on a regular regular schedule of competing as a unit so no matter what what happens in the tournament no matter what the seating brackets are and whatnot you gotta look at them as the top of the heap or yeah. near the top I should say. yeah jasmine allure though back and even least up to the corner vert vixen comes in elbow strike Brings Ivelisse out the hard way, maintains wrist control, kick to the outside of the thigh on both sides. I think Ivelisse tried to block that one with the arms. Pump kick, uh-oh. Vert Vixen. She's got long legs as Vert Vixen. Sometimes that can hurt you. And you don't have the same leverage you need against your opponent who's got a good, stronger base in Ivelisse. Yeah, sometimes being, uh, oh, Diamante. German suplex off the middle. No. Sometimes being uh, the, the longer, lankier competitor can be a bit of a disadvantage. I can speak from experience. Yeah. You know well, that, most people don't realize you're actually six foot nine. It's true. It's a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. The desk hides the legs. Yes, your legs are gigantically long. Your inseams are 46. Uh, side headlock right now by Diamante. Evil with the boots up. 
Vert Vixen, like Slenderman. I am quite slender. Thank you, Tess. No, but you know, I've, slender, I've lost some weight. You know yeah. what that is? Yeah, I know what that is. In the jungles of uh, India. I mean, England. <laughs> Cover here. Jungles of England. Again, Ivalice using that unorthodox suplex into a pinning predicament. I like that. It's getting a two count. Very high bridge. Good technique there by Ivalice. Diamante. Her fiction looks like she's on uh, Dream Street right there. Not looking too good. Her, her eyes were a little, you know, she was out, out there. Took some shot. Took some shot. Bird Vixen, uh, oh man, I think, uh, it, but just judging by the look on her face, a little bit overwhelmed here. Diamante covers. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, Diamante and Eva Lee's ton of offense on her, and they, they're keeping her away from her partner. And Taz, you, you know this full well. Once, when you feel that your your opponent is is panicking, that uh, you know, for a competitor like oh. you, for a competitor like Eva Lee Diamante, oh. that's the. Uh, that's, the, that's there's no better feeling. That's feeding time at the zoo, brother. That's what you want, man. Once you feel that like their nerve, their panic, or stress, that's when you eat them up. Are you kidding me? That's the greatest feeling. I love that. I miss that feeling. Vert love Vixen. that feeling. Yeah, Vert Vixen there tried to counter, but Eva Lease, a quick kick to the back of the knee, brought the taller competitor down, and now the straight jacket applied center of the ring. Yeah, really wrenching back and forth on Vixen is Eva Lease. Eva Lease. Again, using her uh, her lower center of gravity to her advantage as she dropped Vert Vixen down on the back of her head. Vert Vixen puts on the brakes. Th got that kick from a seated position. Ducks under Eva. Lace swinging neck breaker. Well done. She needed to do that. Vixen's got to try get a partner in this thing here. Jasmine Allure has not been in this match since the early going. And Eva Lee's doing a good job of preventing the tag. But Vert Vixen using that up kick. Allure and Diamante both made that tag. Diamante got run over, Taz. Sure did. Oh, again. The Jasmine. Three in a row. Jasmine Allure. Flipping neck breaker. Hooks the far leg. Just a one count. Not sure she got all of that neck breaker, Taz. Nah, I don't think she did either. And that little hesitation she had, Diamante caught her. Especially against such tough and experienced competitors like Ivalice Diamante. A moment's hesitation can complete, or cost you completely. I'm pretty sure the first time we saw Diamante on dark was way back. We were in Miami, I believe. She's from Miami, right? Yes, yeah. I remember that. This is just over a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Bert Vixen here covers. I think it was the first time we saw her. We were both highly impressed by her. Yeah, she is. Uh, a tough, tenacious competitor. But right now, she's uh, against the ropes figuratively and literally here. Double hip toss, double beal. Oh, kind of no. Counter. Diamante sending Vert Vixen, Jasmine Allure into one another. Eva Lease. Well, that's tough for Z Jasmine Allure teaming up with Vixen. Is that they don't have that same cohesiveness. And that's what oh, oh, my God. Sandwich that girl's face. Stereo knee strikes. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Jasmine Allure! Wow. Man, Eva Lise and Diamante. One, two, three. The winners of this match, Eva Lise and Diamante. Taz, Eva Lise and Diamante have been impressive as a tag team, but as individual competitors as well. And we could be, see, I mean, if, if either of these women or both of these women enter that title eliminator tournament, the finals on the on the American bracket side could very easily be Ivelisse versus Diamante. And there's no doubt about that. Uh, uh, Jasmine Law lands. And look at this, double round kicks. No, no choice but to get pinned here after that. Yeah. Ivelisse and Diamante picking up the victory here tonight on AEW Dark. Father and son unite in tag team action. Billy and Colton Gunn will be in action next, and Austin Gunn joining us here at the booth. Oh, great.
this. The tag team bounce it for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 420 pounds, the team of John, Skyler, and Ray Jazz. Jazz, great to see John Skyler back in action here on AEW Dark. A couple, uh, couple months ago, suffered a pretty severe ACL injury, but he has recovered quite nicely. Yeah, a lot of work to come back from something like that when you blow your knee out, but Big John getting it done, man. Good for him. And their opponents from Orlando, Florida, at a combined weight of 484 pounds, Colton and Billy Good. Well, Gun Club making their way to the ring, and Austin Gunn making his way oh. over to the desk here. Aren't we lucky here? Oh, hello, everybody. Outstanding to see you, Austin What's Gunn. What's going on? Thank you for having me. We are graced by the presence of Austin Gunn, and we are graced, graced by the presence of Billy and Colton Gunn inside the ring. No, uh, no trios action for Gun Club here tonight. No trios. You know, I tried my hand at commentary. See you guys having so much fun up here every week, every Tuesday on Dark, baby. I wouldn't call it fun working with Ted. It's definitely not fun working with Excalibur. Hey, <laughs> look at that. Say that right now. On the same page for once, Ted. That's what I'm saying. I mean, Austin, normally I would say I really don't want you at this desk, but I'm not like that. I'm a gentleman. I'm accommodating. I know your dad a long time, you know that? Yes, I do. He's never beat me. He he, 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 he claims he does. <laughs> He's lying to you. Oh, I don't you. know. He's never beat me. Look at this handsome fellow, Colton Gunn in here. Ray Jazz and Colton Gunn starting things out for their Col Colton is your teams. older brother. Right? Colton is my older brother, yeah, absolutely. You guys are always close? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to, uh, we used to wrestle when we were little kids. All right. So nothing has changed. Okay, you're still wrestling. And you still act like little kids. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I was a layup, bro. <laughs> Speaking of somebody that wrestles, Ray Jazz, great amateur wrestling oh, whoa, whoa, standout. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. Yeah, Ray, no, Ray Jazz definitely hell of an uh, amateur background for sure. And he's got a nice body scissor right now on Colton. Come on, Colton. A little bit of, little bit of hand fighting there from Colton as he gets the uh, the ankle of Ray Jazz. It was smart that Colton, the first thing was break that in the twining of the, of the boots. Oh, by Ray. He's going right back to it. Come on. And uh, Austin, Colton is your, your older brother, but you have a little bit more in-ring experience than Colton does. Yeah, I have three years under my belt, um, but he's picking it up. Look at this, look at this. Just, it's natural. We've been wrestling with each other since You could birth. say it runs in the family. Absolutely, you, you could say that. I did, actually. Yeah. You did. Hey, <laughs> see that? I, I know, I'm trying to keep up. Look at that. The heads of Ray Jazz scissored between the legs of Colton Gunn. Ray Jazz, though. Up to his feet. His kip up then there's a beautiful. really good arm drag right there by beautiful Colton. Rage you though, right? Looks you like a young Billy gun. gun right there. Look at that. Well, I don't want to hold that against Colton, but <laughs> it's 40 bucks in the gun jar. I was okay. I was saying the uh he's Justin, Justin, Justin shipped in 40 bucks earlier, too. I would love to get my sentence out. I was trying to say Tabs, don't let me interrupt you. Times, that you know, like Billy, your Austin, dad. Don't, don't interrupt us. Colton Rangy, long legged athlete. A little bit different than you. You're not as tall as your brother, correct? Short and stocky, baby. Short and stocky. There's nothing wrong with that. So we're going to miss by Ray Whoa. Jazz. Big drop. Best drop kick in the biz right there. Best in the biz already? Best in the biz. Look at this. Best in the Look biz. Look at that height. Look at that height. I'd say it's really good. It's definitely impressive as hell. John Schuyler on the receiving end of that uh -oh, drop here kick. Here comes Pops. And Billy tags into the match. Did you know uh, John Schuyler's favorite wrestler is Billy Gunn? Billy? It is? Billy's his favorite? It's Billy. It's okay. Billy. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe you. 80 bucks in the jar already. Billy's got, <laughs> Billy's got a big fan base. Just not me. Oh! Oof. Forearm shiver to the kidneys. And John Schuyler. I, mean, I would think you, your dad does have a big fan base. Oh, oh maybe. Wow. Look at that. 1999 bag of tricks coming from Billy. 1999. He broke in in 1977, I think, right? Sliding. Nine prime. Sliding German suplex is John Schuyler trying to call a timeout. I guess they changed the rules uh, since uh, Schuyler was on the IR. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Billy was right there waiting for him, yeah. Skyler floats over the shoulders. Oop. Billy puts on the brakes, back elbow. 
John Schuyler stunt. Oh, kick to the top of the knee and fun. Oh, oh, man. No. Okay. Well, that's got to bother you right there watching your old man get yeah, driven all, up to the post. It, it's always hard watching your family members, like your older brother and your dad get. I don't know. They're beat getting up. beat up. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Skyler returns Ooh. Billy to the ring. Shot to the side of the head. Two, three in a row. Four. Bringing that aggressiveness. Billy drops to the canvas, makes the tag out to Ray Jazz, does John Skyler. Nice front headlock right there, keeping the larger athlete down. Turn to the hips right there, front headlock just twisting through. The hell of a wrestler wrestled at NYU, New York University, right there in the city, did, uh, did Ray Jazz, so hell of a background. Lateral press, but not, I don't like that, Taz. Didn't, uh, didn't keep Billy, uh, didn't yeah. keep hands on him. Yeah, you know, you got a kid, and also that's, I'm sure you know that already if you don't, you, you know, your dad's a tag team specialist, and you know when you have your opponent hurting, you want to bring him to your corner. Yeah. You don't want to leave him laying there in the middle, you know. So that was a little bit of a mistake, but it didn't hurt Jazz and Skyler. I mean, I think, I think it, it, it underlines the fact that, that both Skyler and Jazz typically compete as singles competitors, not quite as used to. Uh, there you go. There tag you go. Team Got wrestling. rid of him. Oh, Skyler popped off the apron with that spear. One, two, no. A look of deep concern on Austin Gunn's face here. Uh, I don't like this. I'm getting a little nervous now. Well, I, like, I kind of like when you're nervous you don't talk as much. I don't yeah, mean that yeah. bad. I'm just I, saying. Just being honest. I respect your honesty. Thank you, sir. <laughs> At least one of us does. Hey, watch that. It was Ray now, big Ray Jazz. Ray Jazz, the boot across the throat of Billy. Billy in a, in a, in a lot of trouble here. Come on. Oh, he rushed in there. Well, maybe spoke too soon. There we go. There's that right hand. Shot that was. Ray Jazz. Oh, bang, man. bang. Choo choo train. Let's go. Choo choo. Let's go. Get to Colton. Colton's ready for it. Come on. Go, go reach. Ready. Reach. Go He's ready. ready to go. Come on. Billy. Dad, wake up. Let's go. Let's go. He dropped Ray Jazz Let's with go. that DDT. Come on. Come now on. finally starting to stir and make the crawl. Come on. If he can only get to Colton close. right now, let's go. Dive. He's so close as Billy. Ray Jazz made the there tag up to John Schuyler. Here we go. See you Got later, John Schuyler. Schuyler eating a series of clotheslines from Colton Gunn as is Ray Jazz. That is what I'm talking about. Look at that. He's fired up and ready to go. Big splash in the corner for Jazz. One for Schuyler. Two. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Tilt to whirl. Oh, he's going for. Oh, no. No. Skyler escapes out the back door through the right hand. Colton intercepted it through a right of his own. Good job right now by Colton. God. Oh! oh. 310 to Yuma, baby. 310 to Yuma. That's it. Should be called 123 to Yuma. But it's never There's still time to rename it. 310, just 310, 123. No, but it's that's not good. No, Billy. that's no good, Taz. Not good. Come on, Taz. Cool I agree, that's no good. Good. <laughs> I'm gonna go congratulate my family. Thank you guys so much oh, for having great me. Great to have you, Austin. Sure right, thank you so you. much. I appreciate it. Thank you it. so much, buddy. See you later, man. I can't stand that. Wow. I gotta tell you. For the first time ever, Austin Gunn's footprints and Taz's footprints all over the back of Justin Roberts as <laughs> Gun Club victorious here tonight. <laughs> all right, guys. Here we go. I can't wait to see it. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh, Chris, you've completely outdone yourself. But dead ass, yo, how is this even possible? I mean, look at the craftsmanship. It's so beautiful. Look how it turned out. It's absolutely exquisite. Drink what the demo god drinks. A little bit of the bubbly is back, baby. Supplies are limited. Go to littlebitofthebubbly.com and order now. Get it before it's gone, because last year sold out. Viva el vino brioso! Yay! 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 After laying out the challenge to Shaq and Jade last week on Dynamite, Red Velvet in action next.
This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from San Antonio, Texas, Alex Gracia. We've had a few looks at Alex Gracia in the past couple months. She has been impressive, Taz, but her opponent is on a mission. And her opponent from straight out of your mama's kitchen, Red Velvet. Taz last week on Dynamite. Red Velvet answered the challenge laid out by Jade Cargill. Jade has been saying for weeks that she wants some competition. Who's gonna face her? Will Red Velvet put the ball in Jade and Shaq's court? Yeah, there's no back down in that young lady right there. Red Velvet, he wants some of Jade, giving up a lot of size to Jade too. Red Velvet. Alex Gracia, collar and elbow tie. Velvet takes the wrist of Gracia. Really wrenching it. Gracia, though, rolls through. Yeah, sometimes if someone puts a ton of pressure on it, like Red Velvet did, a roll is the right way to go. Take that momentum. Velvet moving uh, moving with confidence, moving with purpose. Purpose very smooth here in the early goings, Taz. Yeah, no doubt about it. We got caught right there, though. Yeah, no, she definitely is. Uh, she was moving smoothly, now she got caught in a front headlock. Gracia wrenching the wrist of Velvet. Velvet, uh, oh, got spun around. Gracia drops it down and control of the left arm, putting pressure on that shoulder. Sometimes that's a good counter out of that arm bar is to get wrist control, arm ring, and then she goes into, does Red Velvet, a full Nelson. Gracia. Whip out of, uh, out of the ropes. Velvet went for a swing. Gracia able to avoid contact. Waist lock. Arm drag, nice. And drops the elbow across the left arm. Alex Gracia really keeping the pressure on here, Taz. Yeah, smart to key lock that arm right there on the mat. Try to keep Red Velvet down, but that's a tough task. Red Velvet created some distance, pulled Gracia into a side headlock, an arm drag of her own from Velvet. Velvet with the fingers interlaced on the hand of Gracia. Now climbs up, twisting arm drag. Very disorienting for your opponent, Taz. Sure thing. Gracia now not knowing what's going up. It all just got dropped there by Red Velvet. A leg lariat stopped Gracia in her tracks. Red Velvet reversed out of the corner. Escaped, boot to the midsection. That's that's almost directed right at Jade. The way she, I don't know, something made me think she was thinking of Jade right there. Oh, I I think so too, Taz. Red Velvet and Jade have uh, oh, knee to the midsection there by Gracia. Oh, that was some. We've seen them cross paths a few times on Dynamite, and it's not been pleasant for Red Velvet. Oh, axe kick across the back of the head maybe of Sunset Flip here, maybe, yeah. Gracia, yep, Sunset Flip rolled her through, but Gracia counters drop kick. Gracia got all of that drop kick. Taking a moment to uh, appeal to the crowd here, might have been a mistake, maybe. Not as she's got a, a crucifix over the ropes there. Oh, mocking, yeah. Gracia mocking Red Velvet. Gracia, oh, Centon off the middle rope, pulls her towards center to Gracia, but Red Velvet able to kick out. A reverse gut wrench right there. Or reverse waist lock, bear hug, whatever you want to call it. Try the roll, she might want to bridge when she goes in that roll on that pin cover attempt, so she's going to pin herself. See, Red Velvet was hand fighting with Gracia, and instead of going after the grip, hit that stunner. Red Velvet, bit of a misdirection there. A clothesline, another one. Oop. Bobbing and weaving as Red Velvet kick to the top of the knee. Oh, man. That rolling soul butt to the head of the opponent has got Alex Gracia dazed, or maybe not. Kaza Dora into the Bulldog. She might just about get her here. I mean, Alex Rasha taking a hell of a beating. 
Standing moonsault, press one, two. Over rotated shoulder was up. The Posey quarter, that's why he hesitated for a second. Red Velvet keeping her eyes on Alex Gracia. Knees to the back. Gracia staggers out towards center, boot to the side of the head. Red Velvet covers, hooks the far leg, and that is it. The winner of this match, Red Velvet. Well, Taz, I think that's a, a case of Red Velvet letting her actions speak louder than her words. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like we were saying earlier, direct shot statement, whatever you want to call it, right to Jade. So hopefully Shaq and Jade are paying attention. That bulldog was the beginning of the end, and that was the end of the end. That running boot to the side of the head. Red Velvet victorious tonight here on AEW Dark. Number 10 of the Dark Order, Preston Vance, will be in action next on Dark, and Negative One will be joining us here in the booth. You better pay up. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from beautiful Champaign, Illinois, weighing 165 pounds, Jake St. Patrick. Jake St. Patrick made his AEW debut on Dark last week, hoping for a better result here tonight, Taz. Well, last week you run into powerhouse Hobbs of Team Taz. That's a rough episode for you on Dark, and that's what happened to St. Patrick last week. Join the Dark Order. It'll be just as rough this week. And his opponent from the key, weighing 240 pounds, Dark Order number 10. Number 10 of the Dark Order with negative one up on his shoulders. They're in full effect. And there's negative one, the leader of the Dark Order, barefoot, ready to go. Like uh, up on the pectoral area. Look at that, Cole Cabana just throwing the shoes away. Negative one doesn't need them. He don't need any shoes. Wow, man, he's, he's just yelling at everyone. Oh, he's, comes. he's headed over to the desk. Oh, yeah. Negative one headed over to the desk. There he is. Hello, sir, welcome to. Where the hell is my five bucks? Well, I've got it for you right here. It's not Go just ahead. the five bucks, two, a negative one. What about the vig, the interest? There's, when people owe hey, you money. Come on, take test, test. Come on. There's more money that you owe him. He doesn't have to know about compound interest. Come on. Oh, OK, OK. Let's just watch this match. OK. And let's see <laughs> Bullet dodged. this guy get destroyed <laughs> by Preston Ten Vance. Yes. <laughs> Number 10 of the Dark Order, Preston Vance. Carrying, one of my favorites. Carrying Jake St. Patrick up into the oh, corner. Oh, he <laughs> thinks he's uh, so, he thinks he's not intimidated. But he will. He's but, intimidated. But how about Jake St. Patrick from Champaign, Illinois, the home of the owner here of AW, Tony Khan. That's interesting. Champagne, yeah. I've actually been to Champaign. It's a beautiful yeah. town, by the way. Tony Khan, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone cares about him, oh. except that no one cares about this guy. No one knows who he is. Well, he's, well, he's trying to make a name for himself here. Yeah, oh. but he's not. Look at that. Did you see that? He well, think he's not intimidating. Preston Vance. Are you serious? Okay, yep, look at that. Swing and a miss there oh, by Vance. No. Look at that. Look at that strength. Crossbody so, catch. Oh, yeah. See that? Stalling suplex. That was like 10 seconds. Vertical 10 seconds. suplex. Excalibur, you can never accuse me again of being biased on comedy. You just can't. I'm just telling you. As you can see, my negative one. <laughs> yep, right there. The oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, yeah. see, he said, I told you. He right there, the negative one on your chest. Very negative similar one. to Preston Vance and the 10 written on Vance's chest. Oh! Ooh. And oh. as you can see, I have my black things. Oh, you, got the, you got the face paint on underneath the mask. Reminiscent of Evil Uno. Yeah. It's actually very fear, fearful. Fearsome. Whatever. Uh, well said. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> covered here by St. Patrick. Oh. Okay, yeah, that was two. That was only two. God. Taz, next time you're going to have to sit in the middle. Hey, listen. Negative one and I are friends. Right. Yeah. We're, we're buddies, right? I mean, we, we are. We're pounded up, bro. Yes. There you go. See? Glad he doesn't have the kendo stick. 
Oh, if I had the kendo stick, I would destroy you. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Taz. I'm no, I know that, you. sir. But you gotta, you gotta start. You. you gotta start rooting on Preston Vance right now. He's in trouble yeah, right now yeah. with Jake St. What? Patrick. What? How? He's How is he in freaking trouble? He's, he's well, down, you're, dude. You're you're threatening down. me with bodily harm while he's Preston getting beat up. <laughs> <laughs> I like violence. <laughs> Such a sweet Come on! <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. If, if negative one wasn't already in the dark order, he could be a part of Team Taz. He likes yeah. violence. Hey, you could fit right in. You like violence. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Hang on, think of this. Oh! He's, he's pressing in this. Jake St. Patrick gets the... <laughs> Will you please? Tess. It's funny. This is unnerving here. Cover here by St. Patrick. He's just. <laughs> I love violence. <laughs> oh, St. Patrick, Patrick shot. <laughs> he keeps doing it, Tess. I'll try to call him back to my job, buddy. <laughs> uh, whoa, watch out. Swing and a miss there by St. Patrick. Uh, oh. Vance with the um, clothesline takes him down. Vance. Dark Order, we love people, but when they start punishing, we hate them. Advance is like a big brother to you, right? Oh, yeah. He's, you guys are buddies, and you guys are tight. He's, he's one of my favorites in Dark Order. Yeah, no doubt. And my second is probably Uno. And my... Oof. And my... Oof. And, uh... There. Yeah. Everybody else tied tied for third? Maybe. Uh-oh. Watch out, five. It's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's oh! oh! There we go. Yeah. Spine buster. He's looking and over to you, buddy. Yeah. Woo! And this, this is it. This is it. The deadlift oh! power bomb. Vance one, covers one, one two, two, three. Woo! I told you. I told you I was gonna win. No you idiot. I'm not Dark talking order, to you. Actually. Number. I'm not talking to you. Ten. It's all. I'm, I'm the idiot. Yeah. Yes, yes, Look at this like five bucks. Look at this. Yeah, yeah it was my I'm five bucks, but. You. I'm intimidating you now. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Easy five bucks. He's an easy mark, Negan Vaughn. You know what I mean? Anyway. Uh, oh, oh the power God. bomb. Deadlift. Deadlift power bomb. Spell uh, the end insane. of the night for Jake St. Patrick as Preston. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Death is nuts! <laughs> Ten years off my life. It gets a break. <laughs> He's leaving. He's getting the hell out of here. That's Calvin's done. He quit. Yeah, get out of here. He's it. out. It's just me a negative one now. Yeah, get out of here. He's done. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. That's how we do it. Super kick Pate! This is the story of Matt and Nick Jackson, seen through their eyes. Over the past 20 years, they have documented their tireless journey, their triumphs, and their tribulations. And now they are ready to share their adventures with the world in their new book. One day, let's grow up and let's be professional wrestlers. This is the story of two brothers that became two loving fathers that went on to become the best tag team in professional wrestling today. This is the story of the Young Bucks killing the business. Young Bucks, we're killing the business. Well, it's main event time, ladies and gentlemen. SCU, that's Kazarian and Daniels. They collide with Chaos Project. Your main event is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring first at a combined weight of 430 pounds, Luther Serpentico. Chaos Project! Getting a good look at Serpentico crossing those arms, really getting Taz's goat. Yeah, I still don't, don't understand this. It's been months, months. Remember what happened uh, with uh, Johnny Valley when he brought the orange and black? Louis Valley. Close. Have you ever spoken to Serpentico about it? He might be a very reasonable man. I don't speak to any of these people, okay? They want to speak to me, they have to approach me. I'm gonna go to the Team Taz trailer. Not a trailer, it's a full room now. We upgrade. And we have air conditioning. Well, that's impressive. I saw MJF going in there the other day. Though. Well, that's a long story, but he <laughs> did come in. There. I saw it too.
and their opponents. From Southern California, at a combined weight of 425 pounds, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, SCU. Anthony, SCU, specifically Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian have made the promise that the next time they lose a straight up tag team match will be the last time that we ever see these men team together. And you know, that's, that's putting a lot of pressure on yourself, but sometimes, you know, for a long tenured tag team, maybe they're just making things interesting. Yeah, like a lot of pressure they're putting themselves, but if they're like me, I'm a pressure player. When I'm under pressure, that's when I come up trumps. That's when I, I dig deeper, I, I try harder, I become better, so uh, maybe they need this extra pressure at this, this stage in their careers. Real competitors to that point, you know, real competitors work the best and, uh, you know, compete the best when there's the most pressure on to the point that Anthony's just making. I agree with that. Serpentico went for a very early a ankle pick there. Kazarian able to avoid it and now just in the collar and elbow tie up. Kazarian will be carried in. Key lock up top. Yep. Uh, got the the hand uh, behind the head of, or formerly did had behind the head of uh, Serpentico. Now Serpentico with the hammer lock. Kazarian. Steps through, regain, regains wrist control, wrist control, and then a back leg trip. Yeah, he used the side of his body, the Kazarian, to get into that top wrist lock. Very well done. Now into the a cross arm breaker. Ju or Juji Katami, some would call that, if you're a judo fan. But yes, it's a nasty hole to extend the bicep and rip it. The sort of pentacle. Ooh, the bottom I don't like. That's because he does the arm fold thing. Thanks. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you're so forgetful. Yeah. Kazarian elevates up and over the top and rips the chest of Serpent Serpentico with that chop. Rings the arm, brings him in to a shoulder block. And He's got a strong grip on that shoulder, on that wrist that shoots it in the flipper and drops the arm on the bicep. And you notice Frankie Kazarian maintaining complete control of that wrist of Serpentico. Keeps the arm flat too at all times. And that's either the forearm or the bicep flattened out while you're dropping knee. That, that hurt like that will hurt like hell. Irish whip into the ropes, reverse Serpentico sends Kazarian in. Kazarian though, oh, flying armbar action. Cover here, the far leg. Serpentico kicks out. And Anthony, sorry, go ahead. So I was gonna say, this is, this attack started from a simple um, shoulder attack, and people don't realize how how much they hurt because you're driving your AC joint, your shoulder. The point of your shoulder into your opponent's shoulder, that really hurts, eh, Taz? Yes, it does, and it's a great way to separate someone's shoulder. When you hit that AC joint connected to the rotator cuff, it can pop the shoulder to, to the point you make it. I think people watch wrestling a lot, and they, they see, and then they don't understand how much the no. rotation marks <laughs> simple moves hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Everything in that 20 by 20 hurts. Everything does. And what happens is, you're right, and what happens is as over the years you wrestle, you kind of build up an invisible callus on your body, that a toughness, an armor that it's tough to explain. And you know, the longer you're wrestling, the, the thicker that callus can get. You can take more, more punishment. It builds toughness. Daniels comes in with the elbow drop. Kazarian, the legal man, over the top with the leg drop. Cover here, just a two count. And uh, Anthony, what I was going to ask you is earlier tonight, we talked about Ray Phoenix being one of your favorites to watch. But as Frankie Kazarian was uh, putting on the, the clinic on the arm of Serpentico, I was going to ask, who are your favorites to watch to learn from? Well, again, I don't want to be a... Oh! A <laughs> uh, bag Yahtzee action. I digress. You'll be and talking a bit higher pitch in the morning. A little bit. You sound like, uh, you sound uh, like, like Luther. Luther when he does the... <laughs> whatever he does, the eye gimmick yell. I think uh, I, don't be, I don't want to be a kiss ass, but listen, the man, two spots to my left, Taz. I like going back and watching the old stuff. Taz in the 90s, the early noughties, mate. Like, listen, <laughs> what a competitor. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Never been beat by Billy of Gun Club. Never. No. A lot of people just beat me, especially Billy. <laughs> Current days, I like QT Marshall, my, my, my coach, my trainer. I love watching. Him and studying him, and the great thing about having a coach that's still an active wrestler oh, because oh my God. <laughs> like that he just falls into a cover. He's a weird man, Luther. A psychopath. That he's crazy. He's completely crazy. A lot of a uh, lot of Luther in your tape library. 
No. <laughs> there's, there, there's not, I'll be very honest. Like, I don't want to wrestle like him. He's lunatic. <laughs> Roll up here by Kazarian. There's got to be some British slang for a lunatic. You got to give me something, bro. Like, there's got to be some crazy mate. No, that's soft. Crazy mate. Yeah. It's got to be, gotta be you, know, you guys all, you guys have taken the English language and pushed it. Let's be honest. Well, it's, it's, it's our language. I mean, you know. It's, uh, I think we'll do with our language what we please, thanks, Taz. I think the language was invented in Brooklyn, to be honest, but I digress. Oh. If you believe that, I got a bridge to sell you. In Brooklyn? <laughs> no. Cover here. No, it's actually not. It's in Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Yeah, there's a lot of bridges There's here. enough of them. Yeah. Jeez, okay. Do you guys say off his rocker over here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we Stop. don't. I mean, it's, we know what that means, but nobody yeah, says it, that. Yeah, Luther's proper off his rocker. I agree. See, there you go. You're right. Was that Luther or Frankie Kazarian? Paul, Paul, tell Paul, Paul Turner. <laughs> Luther keeping Frankie Kazarian in the near corner as he tagged out to Serpentico. Kazarian, though, very heavy handed. Oh, but Luther just a toe kick to the Yeah, I was just going to say the, the toe, the, the you know, point of the toe. That, that really hurts. Uh oh. Serpentico sent for the ride. Swinging DDT on Kazarian. Cover here. One, two, no. That would have been it right there for Kazarian and Daniels. They're, they're an old pair in Serpentico and Luther, but you've got to admire their cohesion. They work really well together. Doug, I, I, I gotta I, say, creatively, I think that it's all Luther coming, just using his partner as a battering ram and beating the living hell out of him. Yeah, I was gonna say, they work well, well for well, Luther. Well together against Serpentico's will. <laughs> Serpentico charging it. Oh, charged into the boot of Kazarian. Kazarian so crisp with those strikes. Oh! Tough night on YouTube when you land on your head. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -mm -mm. We saw Dustin earlier in the night tonight. I um, mean, performing you know, his, his ability, like, belies his, his, his experience in the ring. And the same with Daniels and Kazarian, oh, yeah. two very experienced guys and probably competing as well now as they ever have done. Yeah, they, they certainly are competing at a very high level here. A Serpentico gets sent into Luther's midsection. Kick there by Daniels. Back heel trip. Yeah, that out of leg sweep, back heel trip. Been a staple in the offensive playbook for Daniels for quite some time, and he always does it right. And Luther now getting a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, good point. Cover here, two, no. Luther kicks out. Daniels looking good, looking motivated here. He's another guy I've studied, that Christopher Daniels. He's so smooth in the ring. Everything he does is so good, so crisp, as you can see from there. Oh, but Luther obliterated him with that leg larry. Yeah, after that nice exploder suplex, Daniels got caught with that kick. Daniels avoided the high Angels boot. Wings, Angel wing. Angels wings on Luther. Impressive strength by Daniels. He's got him. He covers, hooks the far leg. No, Serpentico interrupts the count. What a main event we got here, man. Serpentico positioning uh, Luther over in the near corner, makes the tag out, goes over the back of Daniels, rolls him through, thrust kick to the jaw. A short DDT from Daniels on his knees. Serpentico covers, two, no. Very close, very close. That was a that was a big gamble by Frankie Kazarian not to not to enter the ring to break up that pinning yeah, predicament. Yeah, just thinking the same thing. Oh, there's a little sliced bread there. What number are we up to? That, that was number two. Oh, number two. I just want to make sure I get the numbers right. Swing and a miss there by Sir Pentico, but Frankie Kazarian right on the money with that one. Quick reversal by Sir Pentico. What is a Sir Pentico? What does that mean? Oh, it means you just got your head friggin' knocked off. Kick his ass, Kaz! <laughs> I love it. Tag out to Christopher Daniels. Sick of Serpentico. What does that mean? No one oh, look. Oh, man. Luther comes in, interrupts it. Right hand to the to the face of Daniels. As Luther. <laughs> it's the boot up. Oh, the, the trip and the falling clothesline. <laughs> Gesturing at his head as Serpentico comes charging in. Went oh. for the step up, Enzi Gary. And Serpentico being brought up. Daniels on the oh. knees. Celebrity rehab. One, two, three. The winners of this match. S. C. U. Wow.
The snake man got beat. That's what serpentico means. I was testing you guys. Yeah, the, the serpent as the root word. I thought it was pretty obvious, Taz. But it's such a fancy ass when you say that stuff, Excalibur. You know that? Anthony, the important thing is that Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, SCU live to fight another day. They're still together. They're still together. Look at this. Ooh. That, that celebrity rehab ended the night for Serpentico and Luther Chaos Project, and it ends the night for us here tonight. Another great episode of AEW Dark in the Books. Tomorrow night, an extra special episode of AEW Dynamite, 8, 7 Central on TNT. It will be Beach Break, the tag team battle royal with the winners getting a title shot at Revolution. The Young Bucks have entered the match. They said if they win, they get to pick their opponents. We will also see the nuptials of Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. They will have the best man Miro on hand as well as Miro's butler, Charles Taylor. And for the first time ever, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, will go one-on-one -on -one with Thunder Rosa. And in our main event, an explosive six-man tag team match as Ray Phoenix, Pac, and the former AEW World Champion John Moxley join forces to take on the Good Brothers and the current AEW Champion Kenny Omega. All of that and so much more tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. For myself, Excalibur, for Taz, the human suplex machine, for Anthony Agogo, for Justin Roberts, for Aubrey Edwards, for literally everybody everyone, back in the truck. Everyone. Good night, everyone.